Hello. Good morning. Are we on the wrong side of the screens? It's a little disorienting. I don't know. I'm going to switch it. Oh, okay. Changing things up this morning. I just now noticed. Whew. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Hold on. Um, I can try to switch it. It's totally fine. It just threw me off for a second. We are under the wrong logos. It's episode 67. Is this a not safe for work podcast, Jana? Usually. <laughs> Unless we say different, it's uh, never safe for work. And definitely don't listen to it at work with no headphones in. Because mm -hmm. your boss might walk by and be like, what the hell are you listening to? Because that's not okay. Anyway. Um, I'm still trying to move you. I think I have to. It's because you came into the stream yard first. Oh, hang on. I can just get the F out. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> oh, that feels better. Oh, in my rightful place. <laughs> um, so who is here this morning? Of course, Will's here. Tradesman. Aura. Can you still say that for me? Because I always mess it up. Aurelio Syracuse. Thank you. Lost in Snakes. Oh, look, Jana's here. Uh, Bods. Safira. Ooh. Lorga, Lori Gray, one of our sponsors. Good morning. Um, Scenic City, Bree from Smoky Mountains, Proper Royals. Um, did we do Lou? Mm. No, late is here. Uh, oh. on, I, just... I don't know where you are. Lou. Keep going. Creative Coralophus, Blackjack, uh, Marissa, Texas Kid Reptiles, Lisa Richmond from UK. Hey, what time is it there? Whoa, top of the morning. Top of the evening. Uh, it's in top of the evening. Haley, single only Haley. Like... The artist formerly known as Prince. Love it. Lady Tiz. Hi, Nicole. Thanks for stopping by. Um, Mr. Nobody. Reggie. Good morning, Reggie. Good morning. I think I got everybody. Thank you for coming, everybody. Hopefully, this will be fun for the whole family. And not what it normally is. Which is not for the whole family. Oops. Whoopsies. All right, Jana. Uh, let's do our first sponsor spot because that's fun. Our no poop sponsor spot. No poop dot com. Should we should <laughs> stay? <fun. laughs> uh, use code uh, hashtag shit happens with an exclamation point for the eye for five dollars off your crypto panel from RAL, also known as Research Associates Laboratory. Uh, if you go to vetdna.com and you order some swabs, you can get a great deal. So it's five dollars off a twenty-five dollar panel, which tests both the lizard and snake form of cryptosporidium. Test all your stuff. Don't send poop bags. No poop. Mm -mm. No bags of poop. Mm -hmm. If you send bags of poop, we will lose our coupon code. Mm -hmm. So. Please, please don't do that. Thank you, everybody. Who else is our sponsors? Jana? Um, we have the Mr. Shane Kelly. And he has listed on his Instagram a beautiful pair. Uh, the male is ODYB Het Lab and the female is Visual Lab. Um, so if you're looking to expand or get into that project, hit up Mr. Shane Kelly on Instagram or Morph Market. Um, he can help you out either place. Mm-hmm. Or we were talking, to... and he said, stuff's been picking up, so you better go pick, like, oh, sales. Yeah. Quick. Hurry it up. They're going, going, go. gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, this weekend is the Pack Northwest, which is the Pacific Northwest Reptile and Exotic Animal Show in Puyallup. Um, Saturday is 10 to 5, unless you bought those VIP passes, and then you can come in at 9 a.m. and get 
a whole hour of shopping before the rest of the crowd gets there. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday is 10 to 4. Um, if you're looking for those good deals, Sunday afternoon, usually a lot of the vendors are, are looking to make a deal. And myself will be there along with two of our sponsors, um, Stone Age and Powerhouse Python. So if you are local and you're planning to go, please stop by their booths and say hello, say you listen, all that stuff. Oh, and Jana will not be sleeping through it this time. Thank you, Lori. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling getting ready for it? You feeling ready or stressed or whatever? I just stress in general. Um, I think that's par for the course right now. Uh, the biology class that I'm taking right now is pretty intense. Um, a lot of hours of memorizing. We're memorizing all the bones in the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. I hope I said that right. Mm -hmm. um, and then also we have a giant histology test this following week on identifying all the tissue slides. So, you know, that's that's not at all difficult or hard to, you know, memorize all of that. <laughs> and they're not like multiple choice or like matching. Like you literally have to write it in. Right. You so, have to bulk, uh, puke it back up. Bulk, puke it back up. There are no hints. There are no cheater methods. Literally, you have to know it and you have to know how to spell it. And it's intense. And so I kind of just been feeling like, why the F did I sign up for any shows right now? Oh, yeah, because they pay for college. So <laughs> college is going to have to just suffer just a little bit so I can pay for next semester. So well, if you hopefully Justin and... Uh... Oh, my gosh. What's Powerhouse's name? It's Andrew, but I call Andrew. him Andy. <laughs> hopefully they'll rep at least report back uh, how they do. How they do as well for next I, week. I will definitely check in and see what how they do. And then I will try to talk to the promoter and see what the door numbers are. Guess for who's next going week's at, out there this, again? JMG Reptiles. JMG. Oh, my friend is really excited about them. She's like, I want to marry them because she's getting into hog noses. So is he married hmm. uh, she's married but oh. she means that she loves his collection <laughs> um, well listen we accept all kinds around we here accept all kinds you know whatever floats your boat as long as everybody's consenting um yeah so there should be a lot i also heard uh morph Mix mixology is going to be there i've watched him on YouTube oh, all the way time. from Montana? Yeah, it's like an 18-hour drive for him, but he said on somebody's live, I can't remember, that he was going to be there. And so I, I might stop by and say hi to him because I've never met him in person. Um, so it should be interesting. I have no idea if people are ready to spend money because it's right before tax season, right after the holidays. It may be good. It may not be good. The one that was a week ago, two weeks ago, I reported back that it was really good. So... You never know, but I will report back next Friday for anybody that wants to hear how the, the show went. Mm -hmm. And then do you have a show coming up? I snuck into uh, Reptile Nation in Fort you Worth, did. April 1st. You have to like, people want to know. <laughs> they segregate vendors based on whether or not they sell ball pythons. So there's Ooh. a ball python list and a everybody else waiting list so you got in with your boas and corns right i just said i wasn't going to bring any ball pythons so which is totally fine yeah i have enough to fill a table so i did get into that um that'll be interesting i can't so it's wait like to hear downtown it. like downtown Ooh. i'm like i don't know how to park here i, I don't know if i, I don't know. <laughs> yeah i heard that that's a big problem also uh, i think uh Pomon pomona mm -hmm. my friend got tickets and went and it took him over an hour and a half to find parking and then they got out and got in the line and they were in the line for like three hours so they'd already been there for four and a half hours or something and somebody was walking down the line like somebody from the show saying that there was only like two and a half more hours of the show and that the line was they were predicting that the line was five hours long so was this this last one or like one no a year before? ago okay um, wow that was, was like be that's brutal like i <laughs> if it took me an hour to find a parking spot i'd be gone be gone zanito <laughs> i'm from yeah. the country like don't expect me to park in the city yeah i i i think 
There's a bunch of people came in. P- Billy, Lindsay. Hi, Billy. Hi, Lindsay. Morph Wizards. Morph Wizards. Curzy Crew Zoo. Wait, wait, quit commenting so I can click people. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and Curzy Crew. Good morning, everyone. Anyway, so yeah, you'll have to tell us how parking goes because I'm not all about the city life parking. I, the other I'm, thing is I'm like, I always pick like hotels because because they're cheap, obviously. And then you get like, you know, stinky ones. And sometimes you don't. Sometimes they're fine. But like all of the ones in the immediate vicinity are like fancy, fancy ones. I'm like, this is too many stars. This is an unacceptable number <laughs> of stars <laughs> for a hotel for me. So I have to decide if I want to like stay far away right. and then drive in each day and find parking when other people are trying to find parking too. I don't I have no idea. Someone send me a message to tell me what to do because I'm <laughs> incapable well, of making say, decisions. In case anybody for missed it, say again which one you're going to. The Fort Worth Reptile Nation show. Huge show. Uh yeah so if you've done that before Message Jessica and tell her how the parking sitch is and the hotel. I've heard the show is awesome. Like, very good for blowing them out the door like pet. Because a lot of heads come to the door and it's downtown. So people are walking around or whatever. Mm. And if it does well, I would do Houston Reptile Nation. Okay. And if that does well, I would do... West Palm Beach as like a trip, like a vacation show. That's Florida, right? Yeah, it'd be fun though because it's West there's Palm a lot Beach. of good herping and beach and yeah, all the stuff. It'd be mostly like a like a workcation. Yeah, that's near where I lived when I lived in Florida. I lived in Fort Lauderdale, and I believe we hung out on West Palm Beach a lot. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's just a show circuit. With volume to rival in ARBC. Oh, okay. But it's like catered to, to pet sales, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. Instead of other breeder sales or high end sales, right. it's, it's so the like, pet. I probably people. can't fill a table with like breeder quality only. So even if I did Arlington, it, it would be like corn snakes still. But if I could move 50 corn snakes every time I go, then that would make corn snakes make sense. Otherwise. It would make corn snakes make sense. <laughs> That's why I don't Florida, breed them. Florida is uh, corn snakes are a native, so I would need a different permit. And then I had to apply for Texas sales tax permit today. Uh, and then do I you have like, to do the vet check thing too? In Florida, yes, but not to Texas. We'll see. I don't know. Let me know, know if it's worth it. Who knows? But at least Fort Worth is three hours away. So it's like the first test of the system. Good morning, Brian. I sent uh, uh, the the like black hole that is NARBC a message. And I was like, <laughs> the black hole that is. I was like, I'm local and I won't just bring <laughs> ball pythons. Is there a spare table? Because sometimes there are and it's like a secret. It's like a super secret. You have yeah. to know the right people and you have to dance just right. You got to learn tap and, you know, like mm-hmm. anyway. But yeah. I haven't gotten a response yet from the black hole. Um, if I don't get a response, I'll try to sign up for it on Sunday. Are you talking about my my garbage from hanging my sign? Is that what you're talking about, Billy? It's just trash. There's trash in my screen. That's how we like to roll. Or do you mean this right here? Um, that used to be my um, red-sided garter bioactive. Mm-hmm. Used to be R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it right now. <sighs> All right, I think we did our front of show stuff. I was on proper royals. If anybody wants to see me being um, PG, <laughs> <laughs> it was a good sport, though. I'll tell you what. He was a good sport. It was a good watch. Um, I was a day late and a dollar short, so I only caught the second half, but I did go back and watch the first half, and it was really good once it um, came out to video. Yeah. We'll see what happens. All right, Janet. Anything else for front of the show? I'm looking at our notes just a second. 
No, there isn't anything else on the notes, but if you have any other like reflections on whatever. Nope. All right, let's go. So, Jana. Yes. This week was tr a trial for me because early in the week, I read a paper about um, the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. You know what that is? I have no idea about anything the, that you just said except for the word hypothesis. All the rest did not make sense. Uh, uh, how much I want to explain this? So, uh, if anybody wants this to be a topic, I would love to do it. And I almost did it without Janice's permission. It's about uh, an asteroid impact potentially being the inciting incident to a period of climactic cooling that lasted a thousand years about 12,000 years ago. And so North America like re-entered a tiny ice age. Janice not looking happy. The point is like the reptiles had to shift around this like second ice age and the people. And so there's like all of what's happening right now has this like direct connection back to the younger Dryas. Nope, Janice not into it. <laughs> You can keep talking. I'm just going to wait for anything to make sense. The only thing I know about which the Ice Age is like Disney's version, which I'm sure was horribly incorrect and not at all factual. So that's what I'm working with over here. But if you want to talk histology and the skeletal system, mm, we, we can, can totally too. get down. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is like... um. There's a paper that came out in like a couple of weeks ago that is like a public spanking. So firm was that hand that spanked scientifically all the people that like disputed the theory that I blushed. That's how vigorous this paper was. And if anybody wants it, hit me up in the DMs. It is fresh. I've never seen someone like, you know, love, respect. <laughs> <laughs> in a scientific <laughs> paper before was yeah they don't usually like they're usually like real polite and real like so sassy i've never seen such clapping back all right, right that's my I kind know. of science yeah so if anybody's interested in, in a, a you know paleo history or climatology i got some you know i am not alone hot, hot thank reading you, holly thank you she <laughs> makes me question my life choices on a daily basis <laughs> Me too. So I spent like, I don't know, a couple of days like overly doing that, you know, Clovis people and uh, I don't know. It, it was a long time. And then I was like, this is probably unacceptable. So then I did about a, two more days on like whether or not the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service knows what they're doing, which the answer is no, by the way. But then I was like, that's like a four our discussion in and of itself <laughs> okay so all you and then, yeah. <laughs> that understand what jessica's saying she's saying she's willing to host an additional live no, I to discuss whatever the heck she's talking about <laughs> that i still don't understand <laughs> and then and then i was like i don't think i have enough time to do why the u.s fish and wildlife service doesn't know what they're doing in the next two days and so then i did this topic, <laughs> which I was a sort of a topic to begin with, but it wasn't that exciting to me this week. Salamanders. Hey, I recognize that word. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get my bachelor's and still not understand 90% of what you No, said. you're going to do it. It just takes time. 10,000 <laughs> hours to become a master. Wow. Okay. Well, this it's, is it's a little early on the west coast for such big words i still honestly have no idea what the fuck you just said i understood ice age slapped back spanking and uh love, fish and wildlife that's respect. all i understood that's all you need to know love respect okay so this is the, so the spotted salamander ambiostoma maculatum they're pretty cute they're little fat nuggets little sausages with legs they have these like uh, lateral ridges and and you can poke them i don't know i'm i'm into it spots sort of like, like spots a lot like somebody dripped paint on yes them. don't drip paint on salamanders 
not nice. And this is their range, so they're like an eastern deciduous forest species. Okay, um, wait. So those of us who haven't had geography in a thousand years, where's Oklahoma on there? Uh, this is Oklahoma. Okay, that's what I thought. So it's not. Uh, but in I'm your... over here. Boring. Oh, right. Boring. Okay. But so they you were... don't get to go herping for these. Mm -mm. Too dry here. Bummer. Um, they like you know mesic forest habitat both upland and lowland but they need like a you know moist nice leaf litter layer to crawl around and have fun moist how many so people in the comments <laughs> hate that word <laughs> they've been triggered okay <laughs> so many of you live where they are they even go up into canada so billy could go play with them if he wants to but they're extremely special and we'll find out why here in a second but here's their life cycle um, it's, it's pretty fun. So like adults will come to a vernal pool and they, they're spring breeders. Can you see what's Did going they on? they breed balls like that in uh breeding? No, balls? this is like a sexy male display. They like flutter about and like waft their tails at ladies. Um, they do <sighs> lots of like jumping and cavorting. Triple S gets to see them and there's some with blue spots. Mm -hmm. Well, they're, time they're a different them, species. Take a picture and tag the whole back rack, please. Mm -hmm. So they do like this crazy thing in the, in the vernal pools. And they don't, they do do um, internal fertilization, but they don't do do. do, do. <laughs> but they don't have a uh, delivery device for sperm. So they, they drop spermatophores, which are like little sperm packets on the bottom of the vernal pool. And then he flutters about and entices a lady to come receive his packet. So she has to like waddle over to it and squat on the spermatophore and, and pick it up with her cloaca. Is that not the hottest description? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. That because... was a visual I did not need, but thank you. Thank now you, for you have that. it. So like a lot of times if you're running around the bushes in the spring, you'll find like leftover spermatophore packets in the bottom of it that weren't picked up so they were you know not good enough for some sort of sweet lady so if you're uh stomping around the bush you're gonna find the sad leftover <laughs> sperm of the losers <laughs> right and some females oh my want gosh. multiple Only packets on the whole back rack, multiple guys. packets so she'll like check out different boys technique and be like yes and yes but also yes so they'll They'll um, taste the rainbow, so to speak. And then internal fertilization occurs and she lays eggs, usually on a stick. And that she, she's obviously like the, the shape of, I don't know, literally like a hot dog. So it's small, but then she has but proteins in her egg casing that absorb water. So they actually like jelly up like a uh, little, little, little like gelatin or whatever. Like frog eggs? Yeah, but they get bigger. Here's a picture. Oh, cool. So there's a exterior jelly layer on this salamander species. Some salamander species don't have this layer, but but these ones do. And then they have a egg case inside with the embryo inside of that. So you can actually like dig through this layer and pop out a, a distinct egg too. Okay. So for like since like the late 1800s we've known that the the egg uh gel and the egg cases themselves get attract algae that grow. And that algae is Chlorococcum ambly ambliostomatis, which used to be Uuphelia, which is a better name, so I might stick with that. Cuz Uuphelia just means egg lover. <laughs> Which makes sense. For a long time, they only thought they lived on amphibian eggs. And they actually like invade this and then invade this. And they were, and we like, we're like, okay, this is a cool sort of symbiotic relationship between the algae and the embryo. <laughs> yeah, you got to do a package check sometimes. And, and it all made sense in everybody's minds. So the, the algae protected the babies from UVB because it causes young mortality in salamanders and it gave them oxygen and then the babies gave nitrogen to the algae and CO2 and probably good vibes. 
maybe more. We'll see. All the good vibes. It was a, a nice, simple world we lived in. And there was some time where they're like, maybe the algae give the salamanders uh, the, some of the products of bio or of photosynthesis or some other products they might have made. But Burns et al. in 2020, link in the show notes, decided that no, they're actually like competitors for bicarbonate because salamanders do their own heterotrophic carbon fixing. So it's just maybe a CO2, O2 system. Okay, and I then, should know that word, but remind me what is heter heterotrophic? I learned that last semester, but I don't remember. It means an animal that eats food and then breaks whatever glucose down to cleave. Okay. To make ATP. ATP. Instead okay. of making it all themselves. Now I'm I'm following. I just I and this feel is like, like a, a, a new concept because we didn't know how much carbon fixing heterotrophs do until kind of recently which is weird if you think about it. Like you think you get all of your energy from eating, but you actually fix carbon yourself a little bit right now. Right. And then, and they've also discovered that they used to think they were only living on salamander eggs and frog eggs in Northern latitudes. So we've seen this relationship in Japan and China and in North America. But it turns out, like, eventually we, like, figured out they were free living, too. And they could actually be used for, like, you know, synthetic algae growth. So, you, so they actually make a lot of polyunsaturated fatty acids and protein when they're free living. So they could be used for biofuels or whatever. So it's possible they are actually giving some of their, uh, some of the things they're synthesizing to the eggs. But there's no, like, clear relationship there right now. But, but it still was okay because it's, like the eggs in the center of the egg mass would have died of suffocation if there weren't algae on the outside because the rate of diffusion of O2 wasn't enough in like a algae-free environment. So they're good. They're working together. But then things got weird, Jenna. Oh my God. <laughs> in 2011, Kearney found that the algae were actually in the tissues of the larvae and even so far as in the cells of the larvae and this would be the first and only example of endosymbiosis where the host is a vertebrate all of the other ones are like uh, an invertebrate so like a nadarian so like a coral or sometimes like a dinoflagellate will carry around a diatom those are all marine and this is the only situation where we have a vertebrate and we've looked for another salamander we haven't seen it yet but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist this is the only one we have so it's like a world's first world's only crazy situation right here in north america how exciting is that so is this like as monumental as i learned this last semester so i'm a little rusty um when the like mitochondria developed from like a bacteria and like Maybe similar to that. Right. So like a uh, mitochondria was an endosymbiote in some other more complicated. Uh, okay. So it's like organism. the same process. Okay. I was understanding right. what you were saying. But we've saying never seen it in so something where the host is so complicated as to be a, a vertebrate. Okay. But that's kind of crazy. Like why doesn't its immune system go like, I don't think so. Not today. But it, it does. So they're actually like whole algae in this sort of like, this is like the. This is the notochord up here or here. And this is the like the what will be the digestive tract eventually. And these like red dots are like they force the algae to like fluoresce. So that's all algae growing in the larvae. Okay, this is Kearney. This is like the steps. So he uh found insisted algal cells in the inner egg capsule wall before the baby was even starting to divide. So he thought there was like a vertical transmission of algae from the parents. And okay. he did check the adults and he did find algal DNA in the oviducts, but no like evidence of algae itself. And this like idea hasn't been like borne out anywhere else that 
the parents are somehow harboring algae long term in their body because how would they keep it alive and whatever so we don't really know how the algae first gets there if it's there insisted in the egg wall maybe it's like when the mom picks up the spermatophore she's getting enough algae and there's like a bias towards keeping the algae alive and insisting it but nobody really knows we don't think that it could be happening be at like fetal development that the female is exposed the female embryo is exposed to it and so it's being like folded into her reproductive system you think that it's happening well that was his idea is that the 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 embryo keeps it the whole time but when you get to the neurella there's not much uh going on at first but then there's a bunch of ammonia release which signals algae to come they're like luring them in hey, okay come here guys and then they're doing this is like the stage we saw over here there's a lot of them they're maybe doing um, metabolite transfer which later on we had evidence that wasn't true so it's probably just o2 and then around here, they start to reduce the number of algae. They don't find as much. And then it's basically almost gone. And then none in an adult, except for they amplified some DNA from the reproductive tract once or twice. And it was not very repeatable. So he thought it was possible, but like the body of evidence just doesn't support. We just don't have enough instances to correctly hypothesize if this is happening. Right. So, okay. Hypothesis. We have e evidence of it not being true. So, okay. and then because it free lives elsewhere, um, they're literally just luring them in uh, for their own benefit. And then, the, then it, I know that nobody can read this because I can barely read it because it's not very high res, but so it turns out they're literally luring them in. They're tricking them into their cells, the amphibians are. So when they're free living, they're flagellated. They're, we have like the protein point where we think that they enter the amphibian cell. And once they're, they're, they're lured in by like the promise of free nitrogen, they're like, look at how fun it is in here. It's going to be so great. But actually, once they get in, come on in. <laughs> Come into there, my cell. Here's what happens. The, the salamander cell is like farming them for what it wants. And it doesn't actually help them because they end up having like, they, since they can't do photosynthesis, they must do fermentation. They have all this these issues where they're making like the wrong kinds of energy forms. And the, the salamander cell doesn't care. It doesn't actually like have, it does su suppress its immune system so it doesn't hurt it. But it doesn't like help it out that much. It gives them a little bit of stuff, phosphates, glutamine, and they help give it more sulfate. But the salamander cell is pretty happy, but the algae cell, once it's trapped in there, like a bad relationship, is like <laughs> losing its mind. It's oh, it's like expressing like heat shock proteins. It's its genes are like, we should do cellular auto. I should not be here. <laughs> mistakes it, were made <laughs> it was lured in with these promises okay right here it's like, this, oh, will be fun. this is how every bad relationship starts. yeah this will be great it's ba see it's algal hypoxia and sulfur starvation it is not having good time it does make it like down regulate um fl the flagella so it doesn't have them anymore it's just trapped in here with with no end in sight jana <laughs> I just so like the endo symbiotic relationship is mutually beneficial. Every paper about or so the ecto symbiotic relationship is beneficial. The endo one where the algae gets lured in to this like trap <laughs> is only beneficial to the salamander cell, maybe kind of beneficial to the algae, but then eventually not beneficial at all because it's basically crying out for help. It has no mouth, but it's definitely that screaming like parasitic relationships except for that usually it's the other way around it's like farming the salamander larva and then i have this uh, <laughs> there's a little salamander here luring algae <laughs> hey kids you should come in here it'll be so fun <laughs> come on uh little algaes isn't that wild we got lots of good chemicals in here for you it's gonna be great <laughs> and the algae's maybe escape sometimes like if the cops come when they're finally called 
But most of the time they don't. They're just like absorbed by the cell and destroyed. So they're lured in to work for a time and then destroyed. And then the final form is a Bulbasaur. The end. That was it. I just thought it was crazy that it seemed so like benign. Oh yeah, they're helping each other out. But once, if they decide to get trapped in a cell, it's like farming of another organism with no terminal position only to the benefit of the host. So it's like reverse parasitism. Well, like we do that with a lot of things, don't we? But not at the cellular level. Yeah, it's just crazy. Because like, you know, corals will uh, bleach themselves when they're under stress. They like, mm-hmm. they like buy uh, whatever photosynthetic thing that's in them. They're doing that because being photosynthetic, they give more to their symbiote than the salamanders do. So it actually hurts them slightly to keep them around. But they <sighs> need them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Imagine how many of the reptile community would get snatched up if that van said free snakes. Mm -hmm, All of them. So it's, so a a coral is much nicer to its like uh, live-in partner. And so it'll bleach itself because like that's a last ditch effort to like save itself, but it needs to get algae back eventually to keep going. I'm getting like Stargate flashbacks. (laughs) You know, that's what I what's that's what I'm hearing. I'm sorry. From the teal. Oh yeah. Yes. Um yeah. So is the moral of the story that spotted salamanders are dicks to algae? They're only dicks when they're kids. Because when they grow up, they're fine. Okay. Like the moral of the story is we don't know enough about anything ever actually because for a long time we thought they were just like living happily together but like that relationship is fine until like you know there's a something changes biochemically and maybe one algae got into a cell and it was like good for the salamander but not for the algae so now they're luring them in to promote that and then in the end it's they don't need it so they they consume it but there's a there's a very, there's a lot of, the world is much weirder and more exciting than we think at all times, Shanna. Uh, Any questions? Super Snake Syndicate, which pictures? Are they on your Instagram? Drop a link and we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Not Use to hold back in- rack to Hair Hall Farm or whatever. Because I, I can't log into it fast because I have to do two factor on my computer. Is there, I, was that too short? I don't know. I was trying to make it short because of the. We're 37 minutes in. Oh I think my it was God, okay. it took forever. All right, good. Plus, I, just I think was... that my brain has reached saturation point and it was already saturated <laughs> with bones and tissues and cell types. So thank you for that. All right. All I'm going to have to like. Or in the show notes, if people want to read the the, the papers that are relevant. Um, Then one day we'll talk about uh, Younger Dries and Pair Hypothesis. All right, Jana, do you have a movie this week? So I did not watch a movie this week uh, with the show prep and axial skeletons and all that. I just didn't have time. So if you want to suggest what I pick on Monday to post about... Please comment. This is only for people who are watching the live. So if you're watching the replay and it's after Monday, you've missed it. (laughs) If it's before Monday, go ahead and comment. Do you Um, have like requests of genre or something? No, no, no rules. As I mean, well, no X rated, please. But Mm. (laughs) Sammy does Dallas. No, none of that. Um, But no, no rules. Just um, 1980s and after and no porn so um comment below message me whatever and then i will go through it and pick two or three to go head to head on monday and we will have movie madness next week Mm -hmm. all right it's time for our second ad break (laughs) 
Bravo Zulu. Way awesome person. If you're wanting to support military, if you're wanting to support women in business, you want to buy from Bravo Zulu. Um, check out their Morph Market. Message them on Instagram. She is a badass. That's all I have to say about that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Also, BNS. We love Chris here. We just had him on the show discussing boas. If you are looking to branch outside of ball pythons, or if you already have, and you're into the many other species that he participates in, please message him. Or if you're wanting to know more about a new species, I'm sure he would love 50 people to message him questions. He still um, has Taras. He still has a couple Longies. I don't know if he has a couple Costa Ricans. So it's still there. Yeah. So check out his morph market for a variety of species, not just ball pythons. Um, and if you're looking to get started on breeding a new species for you, I'm sure that he'd be happy to answer questions about. Mm -hmm. Then you too can win the Reptile Nation show. Yep. And then you too can have a variety on your table. <laughs> I just thought it was crazy. I don't know if this is private. Okay. I will, I'll keep it private. Someone told me they were number 300 on the ball python wait list for Atlanta. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a lot longer of a wait list. And you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to Reptile Nation. I was like, wait, wasn't that like a really long list? 300. So, so if that's not a reason to encourage you to breed a secondary species besides ball pythons, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. Good job, Chris. Gray family snakes. They are a family whole shabab. Um amazing couple their kids are involved very family friendly they're in the xanthic pied project and i believe that all of their snakes have been changed from on hold back to available so if you're mm -hmm. looking to add or get into that project hit up their morph market um they are looking to expand some of their projects this year so we will continue to let you know how that progresses um but if you're looking to support um family friendly or family involved businesses they are the business for you nice all right next segment next segment thank you all of our sponsors we love you we love you um so in light of all the fun that's happening in the hobby recently um i asked billy from mutation creation if he minded if i stole his idea about like um positivity promos so we're going to start a new thing where if you see somebody celebrating a milestone, first clutch, you know, 2000 likes on Instagram, um, for example, uh, military Morse is expecting a baby boy. So congratulations to them. Uh, Proper Royals hit 2000 subs on YouTube. So congratulations, Adam. And Kitty's Constrictors hit 200,000 views on his YouTube channel. So congratulations. Um, so if you see any positivity, if you see any milestones being hit um anything that needs to be celebrated feel free to message me and we'll just grab a few every week and throw them up um so if you message me and it doesn't get said it's not because we hate you or anything it's just that we're not going to spend an hour doing the positivity but we are trying to spread the love and to focus on things that are exciting and happy and positive instead of focusing on other things so if you have something positive message jana at asm royal tales not hold back and not Jessica. Right. Hold back is just me. That's just Jessica. It's like yeah. two Jessicas and a Jana. So right. it actually makes it hard because people are like, why aren't you following me? I'm like, motherfucker. It's not because I hate anybody. It's because I have to like heart the same thing. <laughs> with two accounts. Yeah. Don't make and me do that, guys. It's fine. If I she hearted you with one of the other, it's I, it's fine. I, I swear I, I try to. I'm just like heart, heart. But I don't <laughs> even go in the hold back one all the time too because it's the same stuff i'll try it's, to share but i i'm mostly on my personal one um but you could i'll message you back eventually i swear so you stole billy's thing so i stole billy's permission. thing with his permission 
Um, he actually is bringing back his podcast on Monday. I'm sure you can follow his page for actual factual information on that. Um, I don't know if he's going to be doing it. Hopefully he'll still be doing it. But um, I just thought that in light of how the hobby's going, that it would be good. Um, Morph Master J is getting married next month. Whoa. Congratulations. Whoa. There's still time to run away. I mean, congratulations. <laughs> Who's the algae in that relationship? Who's the algae? No, I'm sure you're both very happy. and Congratulations. Yeah. Um, will the podcast whore trying to stir up trouble this is a positivity moment, William. So keep it positive. Yeah. That's all I'm yeah. going to say about that. If, if somebody's excluded, it's not for a particular reason. Because like a lot of times we don't know what's going on anyway. Right. It's just, I'm just going to grab a few and shout them out and not going to make a whole episode about positivity shout outs. So we'll, if I get five i'll do all five if i get 30 i'm not gonna do 30 sorry guys so right that'd be crazy that's just how it is i mean it's a limited time and people don't want to sit here and listen to me rattle off other people's stuff or maybe you do maybe you do combo below i don't know what do mm -hmm. people want Haley just had a first clutch a few months back congratulations oh, congratulations see it's very exciting things happening and i would mm -hmm. just much rather we all get to enjoy and encourage them and their um, positive milestones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you ready for news? Yep. Excellent. So uh, this isn't that positive, but the community is rallying around the Hall family. Um, the, I don't know how to be polite here, but the, the mother uh, passed away in a fatal car crash leaving behind uh, the children and the father. And I don't, and now there's an auction on Facebook. This is using the old JT Thompson auction group. And there's a lot of these current right now. And Shane has had a, an auction going. Um, he sold that redhead pewter. Is that it? Just redhead pewter. So if you want anything there's a lot of cool things like what's, uh, what's their private Insta shooting lessons two hours what's their instagram the family or the, the family the, um, is, it, is it like hall's balls or uh, unfortunately i don't know they remember the community um like i said there was a fatal fatality it was accident. cody hall and but i don't know his business name okay but it's uh, in here somewhere there's free there's dental work one thousand dollars of dental work if you're so, in Martinez, uh, Georgia. If you need um, a link to this group, is it going to be below or can you message one of us? It's already below group? in the already YouTube below. Okay, version. Um, so if you can help out. Snakes, obviously. Great. Add to it. If you can't help out by Press adding something, um, try to participate in something that will help you out as well. There's just lots of positivity Knitting. going. Um, the, Still taking auction items for sure. Yeah, um, and they're coming up every day. They have like a two day time, so a bunch of stuff is getting ready to turn over today. So if you want to go bid on that dental work, you can. Yeah, it was really sad. Uh, she was uh, 19 weeks pregnant when she passed. Also, yeah. So if you can then participate or um, give back because um, this is a really rough time for their family. Mm -hmm. And let's That's terrible. They, they are members of the reptile community and let's just show them what we can do when we rally together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully they make a lot of money and, and try to heal. I don't know. <sighs> it makes me sad, but I'm glad more people are jumping on it because the auctions were a little underused like at the beginning of the week and I did share it on the discord, but it was after like right after our show that I noticed it, but now we're doing it. Everybody go uh, buy some, please. Did you have a comment up? For um, yeah, I just all mention it when we're not talking about something Nick, like that sad and, and okay. terrible. So I'll bring it up in a minute, but, all right. um, there was, hang on, there was something. Oh, so S Super Snake Syndicate said that he sent a link to you. 
to my Instagram? All three accounts, so it should be somewhere. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming it's pictures of not a penis. <laughs> so if you would like a... <laughs> this is a message unavailable. Oh, man. Email it to me. Or email it to... Dead air time. I, Dead I air we'll look time. at it next week. How about that? I think the Instagram app isn't updated on the desktop. So if you send it a picture that's using like the new version of the app, it's him herping and seeing these things in the wild. Can you guys see that? Make it big, Jessica. Quick. Mm, how do I make it you? Okay. Yeah, so so them. they have to cross from wherever they were brumating to the vernal pool. So you can find them like walking on the road, uh, just like tromping along, motivated to get somewhere. So cool. Thank you for sharing that. Now you're the big one, Jana. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel funny. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> okay. This is big news. Like giant news. Ken Masick did a video about extreme extremists and trishrock. And remember okay. how he thought for a time that extremist was just het trishrape? Mm -hmm. Incorrect, actually. Okay. There are three genes that are different and distinguishable that all came from the same original female. She just also happened to be ironically het trishrape. Because this animal here is a extremist GHI, and this is a GHI tristripe from the, from the same parents. Let me see if I can get a better. Uh, da -da. I guess not. That was pretty good. Yeah. Like the GHI one looks like a tristripe, and the extremist, which he has a picture on his Instagram, it's just like a reverse stripey looking. GHI thing. See how they like drip black drips, but it's not like the normal like saddles that are like granited out. It's like so a stripe on top and drip. Is extremist a recessive as well? Mm, no. Because they are kind of re reverse striped in the incomplete dominant form. Okay. It's just really dumb that so all is, three came in the same animal, but they're all distinct. So extremist is different than extreme? Yeah, now they are. They Remember they weren't, and then they were, and then they were het tristripe, and now they're all three different. Again. Makes my This brain is hurt. breaking news five okay, so, days ago. So what is your male? Is he extreme, or you don't know now? Because now it's all. It could be anything. It could be a, a walrus. Cool. He's he was sold to me as extreme, but since extremes and extremists were mislabeled as each other for a time, he could still be either. He also could still be hit tristripe too, because that was all in the original female. You have to look at the supers and be like, okay, it's tristripe, it's extremist, it's extreme. If that makes any sense. <laughs> And in 10 years, we'll be able to genetically test those and answer all questions. An animal can be homozygous for multiple of those at the same time, which makes it more complicated also. So, but I check out this video, the links in the show notes for this one, because you're like, oh, that's new news. Because it wasn't, he didn't think that like a year and a half ago. So all of those animals that will test it for het tristripe when they were extremist who knows what those things popped out because because they, they could have been het tristripe because the original was het so it would have been like a 50 percent het every generation down so some of them could have been but they were still also extremists <laughs> it's too much it's too much information i'll have to go catch that so i can understand half of what you're saying yeah i just like I also like the way the GHI tristripe looks a lot too. It's like a different color. It's very bright. It's gorgeous. 
Mm-hmm. 10 out of 10 would it's marry way better than a, a ghi g Clown? stripe <laughs> oh which just looks like mud and then he showed some babies like here's a baby uh ghi extremist see what i'm talking about it's like uh it's like dripping kind of a um arroyo mm-hmm. like so maybe it is a Royo, but backstripe drip. They got mad drip. Drip, drip, drop. All right. Next. Stranger Black Pastel Puzzle. What do you think, Jana? Please inquire. This is by Vivid Pythons. Can Please inquire. It? So make sure you're loaded before you inquire. <laughs> I like this one a lot. I, like a lot of the dark jeans get like fought too hard by puzzle. Not all the time, everybody. Don't at me. But this one is a good what I wanted to see in like a lot of floating, a lot of color, but the pattern's still there. And so, it's like, don't get me wrong, it's a badass snake, and I really like the way this snake looks, but it doesn't scream puzzle to me. Why not? It reminds me a lot of the cinnamon puzzle. But like extra. Okay. I do not agree. You don't think it? Oh, I'm scared. What you're going to say about the next ones? Then this is genetically superior royals, a leopard lesser puzzle head clown. What do you think about that? That looks like a tri stripe. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a puzzle. <laughs> That's really confusing. I don't I don't like when things look like something else. I want to be able I, to look at something. I like it a lot. It's gorgeous. The snake itself is gorgeous. Look at this I don't weird like long hooks. Not even short hooks. Long ones. Wee. And then another one. It's really freaking cool, but I look at that and I don't go, "Oh yeah, that's that's a puzzle." Right, but who cares if, if you like the way it looks? All right, Janet hates puzzle. All right, moving on. I like it a lot. Uh, genetically superior royals. Okay, this is a topic that came up. We don't usually talk about like oh, scam warnings, but we have like a clear example. And this has happened a couple times, but uh, this is in the herpeticulture or herp feedback inquiry forum, which is fine. But someone asked for this picture of this lychee on a paper towel with the requester's name and date on it this lychee's alive he's just p- being a, a, a log right now <laughs> he looks funny because he was just like placed there and then that person blocked the seller after like they confirmed that they had the animal with this picture and then that was their real name so then they started to post it for sale as if it was their lychee with their name and the date to scam people and to send them money So we've said it before, but that was like pre-video and we'll say it again. Don't ever do this. Don't ever write names on dates because they can be altered, photoshopped and whatever. And you're just giving people evidence that they have an animal in real life. I need to get back to watermarking everything. I don't even think that counts anymore. It doesn't matter. You just have to buy from people you actually like kind of know (sighs) or can meet in person. Yeah, that's fair. Because watermarking, like when they stole Kayla's face, her face is a pretty good watermark. They just pretended to be Kayla. Remember that situation? No, or you don't like it? I don't remember that situation. Oh, so somebody took all of Kayla's pictures, made a new Facebook account called like... Which Kayla? Can we... Oh, Jujube and Friends? Okay. Called, like, Jujube, and it was, like, misspelled or something. And took her pictures of her, like, like snipped them, and it was like, this is me, Kayla, and then tried to sell her own snakes or whatever on this Facebook page to get people to send her money, but was, like, fully pretending to be her. So if you had, you know, watermarks, it doesn't matter. They'll just take all of it and just pretend to be you. This is like, I don't know, eight, nine months ago or something. 
So I don't know the right answer. It's probably uh, burn uh, the internet down because it's a bad place. <laughs> uh, that's and all the news. Stuart Weston tuning in from the UK. Hi. What's um, everybody doing out there? Yeah. Dylan, are you vending this weekend at PAC Northwest? Um, also, he is just shared that his partner, Amanda, and him are expecting a baby. So congratulations. Yay. Yeah, we need more joy in the world. More joy in the hobby. More joy in the world. The other thing, speaking of the UK, and I didn't put this in the news because I don't know how relevant it was, but there was a video that was calling for people not to breed common boas anymore. Boa, or maybe just, they, they called it boa constrictor, but there's like some debate whether they were saying boa and Persia or the morph boas. Then a bunch of people got mad because they're like, well, hog islands aren't overpopulated or whatever, but there's like real issues with the cost of like, you know, energy in the UK right now and people needing to rehome pets because they can't run. They could keep some of them, but maybe not a whole stack of pets because it costs a lot more to keep your room hot. So maybe we need like a UK person to talk about, uh, you know, like the, the new enclosure rules. Like, so boas basically are required to have a six foot enclosure in that country at this point <sighs> and and maybe some things should stop being bred as much if the country can't support it at that time you don't have to euthanize them all but this choose not to breed especially now that brexit's happened and they can't like easily export their babies to uh the eu if there's not enough home demand for certain kinds of animals. It was interesting. If somebody wants to watch it, I'll send you a link, but okay, Jana. Any other comments? Uh... All right. Quick collection update. We're doing this fast because Jana is busy. Busy AF right now, guys. Sorry about that. Lots going on. Today is my middle child the s in asm's seventh birthday wow happy birthday happy birthday i am so glad that i'm not giving birth today mm -hmm. <laughs> so yay for that um and then also there's the show this weekend and then biology is no joke people mm -hmm. do you have any collection updates <sighs> or like what are you taking to the show what could people look forward to purchasing um, if you're looking for a pet, I got lots of stuff. If you're looking for um, breeder quality stuff, I probably won't be bringing anything. Uh, most of that's already sold. Um, so it's mostly just... Um, I'm looking for a word and it's not coming to me. Entry level? Yeah, it's mostly like the extra stuff that we don't keep or put like to breeder level that came out of the clutches um also it's january so it's like the leftovers from last season for me um are you doing so, two tables or, or did you like go down to splitting I, I, a corner with holly no we i did we have two corners and i am questioning that now but i bought my table like a long time ago okay. um and i always buy a corner and so now um, I'll probably do what I normally do one table with animals and one table with my kids business. And then I have a friend who's selling, um, pre done, um, Tupper Tupperware, what's the word I'm looking for? Like Sterilite bins as enclosures as an alternative to the glass tanks. And they have already have the heat mat and the thermostat and hides and a water dish and all that stuff. So, um, she'll be on, have those on my table as well. So it might be a bit bare this, this show. Um, I don't even know if I'll be doing the April show because literally nothing is building follicles right now, guys. So I am stepping up my feeding and hopefully everybody's adjusted finally out there. I think I'm getting my humidity right. Cause it's been, I've been fighting humidity out there. Um, me too. 
Yeah, it, I normally Everywhere, never... though, like, this whole state is a mess, but... Well, like, it's Washington. Like, I've never even thought about humidity before. Hang on, sorry, I messed up my hair. But um, never had to think about humidity before. It's always just been great. Um, but for some reason, out in my snake shack, it's really dry. And so I've been working to get the humidity right. Like, the cocoa dries out really fast, and mm -hmm. their waters are evaporating a lot to, like, make up for it, and... So I'm trying to get a balance so that doesn't happen. Um, and I think once I get their humidity dialed in and get them a bunch of food and they fatten up a little bit, I think then everybody will start going. So I don't know if April will even be worth it for me because I'm just selling off like the last of, of last year's. But your kid is still selling uh, kids corner type stuff. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like um, plush snakes and snap bracelets with snake heads on them and stuff like that would it still be worth it just to go for her to do that if you went down to one table and just had like whatever was left over um not really because well i mean maybe but it's like two nights in a hotel and um i also i'm doing school and so i'll just have to weigh what classes i have at the time because i'll be next semester and see if it's worth it and then also it depends on what sales are like this time. So if I sell no snakes at this show, which can happen, um, mm -hmm. then I'll definitely go to Portland. April. Yeah. yeah. Will said, um, tried to buy the original female super splatter migraine from Chris, but since Brexit shipping would have been 1500 to DDI and another 500 from DDI to me. Yeah. So like, they basically lock themselves on their island now in, in a snake way because you need to make it like there I know there are people with like basically a master CITES from England that can go directly here but there's not that many so like the common ones like DDI are in Europe so you don't want to do customs twice no um, Dylan just slide into his DMs he's usually really accommodating or um, after everybody's set up in the morning he should know if he has extra spaces but usually if you just message him and say oh i actually need this many tables he'll just fix it for you so just let him know and he'll, he'll make it happen i'm pretty sure mm -hmm. that's been my experience anyway so what about you you've got lots of stuff oh my king snakes just came out of brumation so hopefully we'll have king snake breeding soon mm -hmm. they probably still would be ready by april Oh, the babies definitely won't be, but I mean, right. they'll probably be the first babies of this season for mm -hmm. me. Hopefully they do better. This Hopefully year. I get eggs that are fertilized, um, but I, I, mean, I don't feel bad. I didn't know what I was doing and, and it was fine, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like Morph Markets picked up a lot and I didn't even have that much on there, but I've had like way more inquiries, sold some stuff. As people be like, I don't want to, like they didn't want to wait like pay me and then wait and i'm like you're in your temperature is like 15 degrees so i'm not shipping right this second <laughs> but like i feel like it's already picked up a bunch um so i'll be posting stuff but i do want to save stuff now for april i did message a i'm not going to keep it uh anonymous a national wholesaler to see like what they would buy certain things for I'm talking like single gene ball python combos or whatever and corn snakes and they messaged me back once to say like they accept no ball python more than 175 grams which was news to me like they wouldn't buy like a slightly old baby no like and i was like okay like, i kind of get it because then they couldn't keep as many but they're supposed to be sending them out to pet stores like that's the point of the national ones Right. And so they wouldn't be sitting on inventory that long anyway. So you would think the the size would be like 500 grams or something. Um, it's probably because most of the chain pet stores have standardized boxes of enclosures and they want that size. Okay, this isn't a chain supplier. This oh. is like a mom and pop supplier. Oh, okay. That's but, awesome. But yeah, it's weird that they put a, a stipulation on it. Yeah, I just wanted to share this because this was new news to me. 
that so like, basically if you're going to wholesale it you should do it right away yes it's not so, worth so, it. I so, mean, once they've eaten a few meals it's not worth yeah. it to continue to feed them right so it, it puts an interesting like time pressure if you were going to use these national wholesalers for your obviously they don't magically wake up and they're 175 it takes a couple a while a couple months or whatever <coughs> but you'd have to be like You'd only get like maybe one show out of it or maybe two shows before you're like hurry to a national person. So that makes them like less useful to me. Like, isn't there like all better? Their utility is like you get a good price on a lot because I couldn't move them over six months or whatever. Right. That's usually when I look to wholesale as well as when it there's going to be a big gap between shows and it's pet quality and I don't want to feed them for six months. And because, like another six months. Right. Another six months because then they're going to be costing me money rather than making me money. Mm -hmm. So I just thought that was very strange. I didn't email all of them. I just was just curious. And that's part of why I was like, I need to show soonish if I'm going to keep holding them or I'm going to wholesale a lot of them. But then, and then he just like never got back to me again. So I don't know if. <laughs> Because you didn't do the secret means. handshake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's like, you need to go through and check and see which ones are more than that. And most of them weren't yet because they were born late. Um, I live by then. But I was just like, this seems like a, like a scam. Like you need to know your wholesaling or make clutches that are for wholesaling. Like I'm just making bananas. And I plan on wholesaling them or whatever, you know, like, or just bells. Like if you're a person who wholesales only to make the money and not Vin, then you would know like your animals are established. You wholesale them. They're a hundred grams, but it's just like, I thought that was weird to me. I don't know what you think about it. I did try though. I was trying to be like sleuthy, figure it out. Yeah. That's an interesting conundrum. because <laughs> If you're trying to sell them yourself, Phew. usually you. they're at least that 200 gram mark yeah you uh, want them to get like big and juicy so that they're like well established mm -hmm. and then even if they're like 125 very quickly after that they will slap past 175 so you have not very long between like establishment and when you're cut off of the national market so weird you just have um, to try to find um, somewhere in your state or in Texas. I mean, Texas probably not because there's so many, but like a big, not nationally owned pet store that wants you to supply them. Because then they feel yeah. like they're, they're more flexible. Yes, that is true. Everybody at home. My problem here is like no one lives here. Like in my immediate, like three hour radius. <laughs> Well, and you also have Will Banks by you. By you. <laughs> He's interesting because he doesn't vend these like local shows. He vends Arlington, but he wasn't at any other local show I've been to. So he's choosing to like make his money on like a very convenient online sale through his website to like a pet person, which is fine. Like that's a fair strategy. But he doesn't do shows too. It'd be interesting to know his wholesale percentage. Oh my god. It would be interesting, but I don't think he'll ever reveal Oh, I don't think he'll secret. share. Like, but it would just be interesting <laughs> to know like what percentage of his production he sent. I bet he does a lot that's I think he does purely a lot like established and sent to Oh for sure. I'm sure he has maybe contracts. He, maybe he even he is a pet smart, year. like a tier two whatever tier I'm one i'm sure that he has to because he does like 300 clutches a year or something insane like that you forgot a zero what three thousand clutches a year no way way really everybody hit uh w in the chat if you agree. <laughs> oh yeah i guess if if the best way is like a, a good relationship with a local pet store where you like like and approve of all of their husbandry and you and whatever that is the best you usually get the best prices you don't have to send them as much each time you could send 10 
like some of the national vendors are like minimum buy to ship is 25. So how many like small timers are like, I have 25 that I want to wholesale right this second. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, after the last show, October, I wholesaled 10. Right. That's I a, probably that's could have, I probably could have done 15 easy, but they didn't want normals or normals hep freezer. Um, they wanted one gene or more. Um, and which is fine. Um, and I got a great price for them, but 25, I definitely could not have filled a 25, especially under 175. I don't think I had 25 snakes under 175 in my in my baby rack, including right. like holdbacks and stuff. And it's definitely right. not like things that I want to get 25. It's just like an for. interesting problem that specifically ball pythons only have. And then then the, the no wholesaling normals. Like some pet stores or whatever take them, but all, all the national vendors, all their listings were like. We only take single genes or like combos. We only take single genes or combos. They will not buy a normal from you because they can get a normal out of the wild. So even though your normal is better because it was captive bred and doesn't have any diseases and doesn't have worms and will eat, the national wholesalers won't take it. So this feels like something that's a problem. I don't know what to do about it. Specifically for ball pythons because they will buy normal corn snakes nobody imports corn snakes from florida in on mass because we don't care but they'll still buy a normal corn snake but not a normal ball python also a normal corn snake is much less flashier than a normal ball python yeah but ball pythons are still cool marshall says uh a good wholesaler takes it all including normal males and heads Send me that DM. I was just going to say, he's not going <laughs> to give you a secret handshake. Nobody ever is. I know. I can't get it from Shane either. I, have I, mean, I haven't been like needling personal, Shane either. Personal favors <laughs> for personal information favors. about wholesalers. Um, may have given personal favors to get information about a wholesaler. Whoa, and... you heard it here first, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's still like, it still doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> you just have to. It's it's seriously it's this secret club that is really hard to get into and nobody wants to share their information because obviously right if that person gets are... flooded out then right. they won't exactly. buy from them too which is it's totally fair it's just like like I have friends that have wholesaler connections and they'll take my snakes and they'll like third party them to their wholesaler but they won't tell me who their wholesaler is isn't that wild. And it's like, I don't they're know like, what any of this means. That's like, how we have to do it because I'm not giving you their name and information because then you'll try to flood them too. So, um, yeah, especially in this market, they're extra, extra crazy about it. So, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, if you uh, know how the wholesaler market works, slide into our DMs. I won't send nudie. Picks, no, though. not Sorry. for nudie picks. No, that was not offering favors <laughs> I'm in the DM. I'm Sorry, not. I should clarify that. Not offering favors if you just want to talk about how it works and what someone can do to get into it. Also, I favors. might send nudie picks to uh, uh, Vend at Arlington in a couple weeks. Right. So listen, okay. I think they were talking about it earlier, but I missed it. It's like a middleman for a drug dealer. I have done wholesale, I think, three times now in three years. And every single time, it literally felt like a drug deal. But not like not like a baggie of pot from your bro drug deal. Like, drug dealer where, like, you could die drug deal. <laughs> where they've made you swallow a cocaine or put it in your butt or something. And then now you have to cross a border. Right. You're a mule. Person of all pythons. <laughs> It's really intense. Um, not that I'm ungrateful. I'm super grateful to be able to wholesale um, when I need to and that people are willing to be the middleman for me. But getting your elbow into any kind of wholesaling, is it's pretty tough. Yeah, it's much easier. No offense, ball pythons for boas and corn snakes, in my experience, because they're just not as common. So like people don't protected as much even though corn snakes are extraordinarily common right but there's something about corn snakes where like nobody cares anymore <laughs> so it's like yeah whatever like i've wholesaled boas when i had my old collection to the local pet store and he was like i'll buy whatever i don't care but he wouldn't buy ball pythons then either 
Interesting. Uh, I think we're pretty much done. Uh, my, I have an, uh, I'm getting ready to have an ovulation. I have an egg, uh, the, a clutch in the incubator for ball pythons. And I have a bunch of stuff that's like 15 to 17. So they're just starting to build. Oh, great. Yeah. First locks. But not as many as I wanted because I don't think they were happy over the summer. And they didn't get fed twice for a month. Like the first month and the second month. So it's, uh, I'll probably have a slow ball python year, which is fine. Right. That's Fun. good. Everyone should be having a slow ball python year. <laughs> um, I think I'll end up having a late season that turns into next season. And I'm not super sad about that because it, it's it's going to be fine. Um, I don't know what that means regarding like shows and paying for school. But in regards to like workload and stuff, that's pretty good for me. So what about your corns? Are they still down? You had so to I wait. brought them up early because it, it was like 80 degrees for a couple days. And then oh. the, the basement got hot. And I'm like, this is nonsense. But now it's like really cold again. So I brought them up like three weeks ago at this point. And I've been feeding them up. I did try to pair some of the little, the little boys. And they're like, I don't know what girls are. <laughs> so... I don't know what to do. It's touching me. I know. She's got weird features. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those things where you have to like have a meal and have a backup meal. Like I, I try the young boys first for a couple of weeks to see if they like get the, the tingles. The, the, the tickle my pickle fingle tingles. And if they do, then it's fine. She hasn't like ovulated yet. But if they never like figure out that they should want to court her, then I can quickly sub in a more mature male. <laughs> in case you didn't know, Chris H is Jessica's husband and our number one fan, and always uh, hilarious. Uh, yeah. um, what I, about boas? So I have three ovulations and post ovulation. No, two out of three of post ovulation shed, and I want it to stay at that number. But I'm scared some people are going to want to try to ovulate. So I've Wait, so they have them. males? How many got males? Boas? Three. Three. But I'm okay. sc I don't want to produce a ton of boas this year. I know, right. Yeah, but also yeah, you don't like scared. it when they kind of like push their face off. Right, so everybody's being pretty good, but they're starting to get... Oh, I lied. Four. I paired four. Oh, okay. And you have three already that have ovulated. Right. That's, That's awesome. enough. That's but enough. I, I'm scared the other ones are going to try to ovulate, and so I've been trying Can't you to reduce be slow. their feeding. Yeah, to try to help them. They're boas. They're like immortal. You can feed them <laughs> once every six months, and they're like, "That's it. That was the final calorie. <laughs> that was it. Now I'm gonna go, babies. <laughs> Here you like, go. Stop. Surprise. Stop it." So that's my dream that th that I do not have eight litters of boas this year. Three would be great. It would be like the IMG Jablonski stripe, IMG VPI stuff, IMG snow st or snow stuff, and then another sharp uh, snow litter. So sharp snow glows and stuff. That that female. So you're just working in more of that more higher end stuff. You're not doing any like. The only thing that's like not high end is the stupid uh, Jablonski super stripe. Oh, okay. They're just so rare. How many people even have any Jablonski super stripe? Well, I don't stripe. even know what that is. So that's fine. He was on bullshit the other day. And I, and I, I didn't put two and two together because the guy's name is like Jablonski, blah, 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 Jablonski. And I was like, okay, it's just a guy, like an old guy. Then he's like talking about Super Stripe. And I'm like, are you talking about Jablonski Super Stripe? And he's like, yeah, that's me. And I'm like, that's you. <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing that's named after me. <laughs> I know. This is crazy. And he said, people Wait, where out. were you talking to him? I in the chat on bullshit. And I was like, <laughs> you're here, buddy. And he's like, yeah, I had them and they would never breed for me. So even though they are named after me, I never really did it. And he sold the whole project to a guy who, like, 
was in the hobby and then like decided to give up but then left all of their animals in a locked like building and didn't come back so when the landlord came to be like you didn't pay rent a lot of them had obviously passed away and it smelled fresh i'm just relaying the story from the live it was crazy it, and so all of the from Javonsky's proper rails live no this is a bullshit live from like two oh, weeks bullshit ago. live oh okay okay Okay. I'm like, wait, I watched that whole thing and I did not catch any <laughs> of this. It. Okay, okay, go. Whoa, whoa. And so all of this morph almost died magically long ago. And ju they just did, just some of them didn't die after being left alone with no food or water for months in, in Florida temperatures without, I don't know, temp oh, control MP. or something. I mean, hopefully it was in the winter and they didn't all get brain damage. And then he helped... They were like, your name is all over everything because it was all like Javonsky oh, Superstrike. Okay, no, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. that now. Okay, okay. So that, so I had... They asked him to like coordinate rehoming yes. the animals. So I okay, had yeah, like okay. a I triple great granddaughter of those snakes that survived being tortured by some douchebag. And I'm trying to keep the morph alive. So I am doing that pairing again, but with a IMG BPI to keep it relevant, slightly high end, you know? Right. So there'll be IMGs and normals, 100% head for VPI, possible head for Super Stripe. And it's sort of like a leaky head with head effects. So we should be able to pick the best of them. Hopefully. Cool. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. What's Did everybody I, in wait, chat wait. doing? Breeding hundreds of snakes? What else are you breeding this year? The Jap rats you'll probably breed. Will you have more than one pair to breed this year, or just still the same? Mm -hmm. Nobody's big enough. Except yeah, for the Skyline original. is still a little, a little peanut. <laughs> no, she's actually getting really big, but like she's not ready to breed. I didn't buy any more. I bought a a pair of babies. I bought. So you have one that's like eighteen months from two years ago, and yes. then a set that's like six months, and then the parents. Cool. Yes. Okay. And then I have Bard Eye now. I don't know if you knew that. What's that? Uh, Baird's Rat Snakes. I got a hypo and a a male hypo and a female normal. They like look silver with like rainbow. Have you seen them? What are you flicking with your hands? You're killing me. <laughs> I'm smalls. like playing with stuff. Don't do that. <laughs> um, what about any of your like old world rat snakes are you bringing uh, any of that none of those are old enough the diamonds oh, okay. aren't old those enough are the russians aren't old enough oh because you got those last year huh i got the russians in 2020 and how long do they have to grow up for yeah, like three or four years too oh okay so yeah just... it's nothing nothing is really so changing you got a freaking like whole garage full of freeloaders is what you're trying to say hell yeah sister hell yes <laughs> Okay, so here's the question. How many snakes are in your Husbandry Pro app? More than 500. Well, I mean, 500 is the cap to the app, so it's like, fuck you. So 500 not... is the cap to the app? Is that just the subscription that you have? Right, I'd have to go to the next subscription. The highest app. one. Mm -hmm. What subscription do you have? I just got it, so I'm asking all the questions. I don't know. Uh, I think like the business plan like there's okay. hobbyist which is up to 24 which is a waste of time obviously <laughs> yep nope no thanks. then there's like business which is up to 500 then there's like professional or something like that yeah i think i got business just to see and then if i liked it a lot or wanted the extra features in professional then i'll just upgrade yeah i'm a little i'm almost thinking of dropping it because i a bit literally just using it for timing at this point for feeding <laughs> can attest we are drowning in snakes cool focus i can't focus when she's playing with the rubik's cube okay what do i need to focus on uh, I was asking i'm about... still looking out for a good picture of a barred rat you know oh, third okay. eye reptiles has a good picture now we're just chit chat so if anybody has any weird questions uh let me know. yeah weird question time we have a couple more minutes before it's for long those... enough yeah, for those 40 of you that have stuck it out, I think we've lost uh, probably like 100%. 15 or 20 <laughs> people's. Uh... That's okay. This is the end where things get weird. 
I just like that we're not like desperately racing to be done by two and a half hours, which is <laughs> we're too like... long, people. <laughs> this is great. I'm like ready to go. I'm not stressed out. I can actually eat lunch today, which would be great. And then I can just go in there and I've got a few hours before my kids come home and I can get all ready for the show and get my car loaded. I might even get to set up tonight instead of tomorrow morning. <laughs> we'll see. All right. I have a question. This can be for the chat or for you. I'm pretty sure vendors are selling Western hog noses illegally at reptile shows in Oklahoma. Do wink, I wink. tell? Yeah. Well, do I tell the promoter this or do I pretend like I don't know? Um, Cause Sean think- recently, Sean Gray was like, if you don't know how to use the permit system for Florida or whatever to vend, please message me and I will walk you through it. And I'm like, what about all the permit system for Oklahoma? Like, does that invite my nosy Karen feelings? Like, so, I don't want to. I don't want to rat on someone, but I want to tell the show promoter to ask the vendors if they're telling the buyers that they technically need a permit. That's a great that area weird? because a in most situations you would be a Karen, mm-hmm. but b if someone's breaking the laws then they're putting the entire reptile industry at risk because they're not following the rules. And so you might start with just not talking to the promoter or if you don't want to be involved at all, talking to the promoter. But I would go up to them and just be like, hey, did you know that there's like laws and rules regarding hognose snakes here in Oklahoma? And maybe you should be looking at those. Would you go to the buyer or the vendor first? It, I mean, that's your choice to make. It depends on like how big of a deal you want to make out of it. I don't want to make it a big deal. I don't, literally don't care. But everyone I talk to, all the sovereign citizens of Oklahoma, they're like, I just got this hognose snake. And I'm like, do you have a permit yet? And they're like, no. And I'm like, dear sovereign citizen, uh, they can technically inspect you without with that permit. And there's a reasonable fine for said permit. Um... Let's look at this real quick. Um, is there a... Wait, that was when you were still here, right? No. No? Those are since you left? Yeah. Maybe I got I them like them a month your... ago or something. Maybe I saw them on your Instagram because I feel like I've seen those. I've never posted them. <sighs> well, I'm on crack <laughs> cocaine. So a really good bard I will have like silver scales but with like red in between and that's then like, really cool this is the wild type they come out of the bushes this way they're beautiful and, and they're basically like a you know a corn snake or whatever in terms of care they get a little bigger still in pantherophis oh i would prefer a bigger corn snake actually are they thicker around or longer which bigger Both. do you mean oh Both. but okay they're more yeah. like a black red snake in terms of build black rats are even bigger though but you don't know what that is uh they're bigger than a corn snake though like girthier they're more like my japanese rat snakes in terms of body all right let's answer Lori's question any more questions let's look at this kitty too (laughs) i love him so much (laughs) all right go ahead Oh, Lori's question was, what do you recommend for boys who keep saying, girls, ew. Are you talking uh, about ball pythons or corn snakes? I assume she's talking ball pythons. I think that's all, right. all they have. Um, for ball pythons, there's a number of tricks that people use. Um, you can throw in a shed from another male. You can um, put like sperm plugs from another male on the back of the female. You can try um, putting the female in with the male um you can like wait i mean if you have time to wait you can wait till they're a few months older sometimes they're just not quite ready um what about you jessica what do you do hmm i don't like doing the sperm plug thing i think i've talked about why before because i like the information that the the retained sheath provides because it'll tell you if they're locking do we all know this? Do we remember this from a long time ago? Yeah, so it- I, I, I know. I know. <laughs> Check the peens afterwards, guys, and then you'll know if they locked. Right. They could be stealth lockers. But but if you 
express the hemipenal sheath material before, you won't know. But if he used a side, he will have cleaned off that sheath, just rubbing it around, trying to insert. So, like, that's how I know if someone's stealth locked fast. And they definitely have. I've had put them in there, come back a couple hours later, they're not still locked, and then checked, and he averted his peen at some point. Do we know if he hit the money? Maybe not, but, like... That's good evidence. So that's another thing is that you can check their peens and see if they have those sheaths in there or not. Because if they don't, there is a good chance that they're just a quick boy, not a ooh girls. Because once they've locked, usually they'll go to separate sides. And if they're quick boys, then you're not going to catch it. And you have no way of knowing that they they locked other than looking at their peens to see that. Um, mm-hmm. That's a Jessica pro tip. I don't. I've never heard anyone else say that they do that. She's the only person. I love looking at snakes junk. She, I had never spent time inspecting ball python peens until Jessica and I became friends. And then she's always talking Mm -hmm. about their peens. And I'm like, I never look. I mean, like you pop them when they're babies. And then when they're like a year old, I have popped them to see if they're like fully developed and ready to go. um, Cause they have a different look. And she's like, Oh, you need to be like, looking at this and this and this and i'm just like oh i guess i'm supposed to be like hanging out with my boy snakes checking out their junk it's like navel gazing but for peens no you don't have to do it a lot but i think it's it's helpful to see like which lines mature faster like if you're checking them at six months or eight months or whatever some males even if they're 18 months have immature looking peens even if they're big and you're like oh Very true. it's a slower slow slow guy so if you can find a bloodline that no matter what their size is, has mature peens and is sexually mature at a smaller, a younger age, that's a valuable line to work with to me. Um, oh, for sure. um, I like encouraging them by feeding them a lot. So I would feed them maybe twice a week for a little bit. This is true for corn snakes and ball pythons. So if he's like on the edge and he seems weirdly yeah, immature and you're eyes. like, yeah, what are you I've doing? But I'll like feed him faster for a little bit. And sometimes they'll just be like, and I'm just feeling really flush with calories. I'm going to dedicate some of that to growing my peens. Or if you have them on like weaned rats, Jessica feeds her males small rats, which I had never fed my males anything bigger than a weaned. And she's like, girl, your males are shrimpy. What the hell? And I'm like, it's crazy. I feed them what everybody told me to feed them. And she's like, you need to be feeding them smalls. Um, so sometimes that can help too if they are getting more calories. Um, but just keep putting them in, even if you have an ultrasound, like those are the ones that need to be put in every month because it, they're going to figure it out. But usually it takes, I've the slower males for me, um, a good three months of feeding better and continuously putting them in before they feel more confident. But if you don't keep putting them in, they're not going to gain that confidence as well. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Will says, I just heard Earl discussing it. If your temps are too high, you get lots of slugs because it kills sperm. That's true. But it's, and it's true from both directions. If the female is a hotspot squatter or the male is a hotspot squatter. So you almost have to protect both of them from themselves. Yeah. I keep my adults actually lower than I keep my babies Mm -hmm. because I had a hotspot squatter and it was not good. Um, so Chris wants to know when you're going to hire an assistant that's why we bred i thought i want alex to do it that's why you made progeny <laughs> that's what i'm saying you um, should do isn't it. he five small nimble hands oh oh okay <laughs> they fit um, in tiny faces Chris, i heard most people when they get past about 200 to 50 that's when they ask for help but then there's weirdos although i shouldn't say weirdo because that's not that's not nice but then there's overachievers that like to just do it all themselves so people like Garrick DeMeyer he has like one assistant and like two facilities so so you're saying he should have two assistants always have two (laughs) um I'm just saying that poor man needs like 20 I know he looks stressed not not 20 but like a good three or four (laughs) Lori says offspring don't help she has four dang it that's what that's all this time and investment was building. hers are old too you better be a, they want phones they, they better be in there yeah, they cleaning some poop. Practice. yeah I, I i need to like get more 
it's been like a shit show i'm be honest husband since we moved we're like everything is different and nothing was stabilized again and i don't know who's going where you know like so like the, the schedules have all been like shifting even like animal feeding schedules they used to be like more regular now it's like shift skip skip it's it's even more wacky doodle and so like that's why i got husbandry pro because i'm like oh they're fine they haven't eaten in you know eight or nine days a little be good for another few days and then it's been another few days and i'm like did i feed the snakes oh yeah i mean it's good to remember what going on and so i'm like i need somebody to keep me honest because these snakes need to be fed probably like every six or seven days at this point because they were fed so sparingly through the fall yeah then use it for that i just wish there was like a version of it i don't know i think what i'm gonna do this year is not upload babies just upload holdbacks and let the holdbacks be the marker for the feeding schedule for that cohort oh yeah that's fair if that makes any sense because like you know you'll put something in the incubator which is like the incubator on the app and it'll generate babies which seems like convenient but then it generates them wrong most of the time and it doesn't it obviously doesn't generate the morphs it'll try based and on does the it mo- take out those counts for your 500 yeah. <laughs> well, like if i just just, just put, put them in, in as one egg <laughs> that's what i'm saying like if i put them in as right. like just my holdbacks that i'm keeping anyway and then I keep the notes on the 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 bin for if they've eaten at least six times or whatever. Right. Then the reminder is based on the holdbacks from that species and not from whatever. And the bin notes are that they're ready to go or not. And then I won't get up to 500. I don't actually have 500 stakes that I'm keeping. I just have 500. Oh, I didn't think you had 500 that were like permanent residents i assumed that was a lot of babies from the fall Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it it just makes it like corn snakes have a lot of babies people (laughs) yeah yeah and then you don't have to go back in and and delete them once they're sold so this isn't like husbandry pros fault like if i had like a full-time data management person or i was like i'm gonna spend four hours every wednesday like deleting sold stuff archiving the sold ones it would be better but i just don't do it that way so i'm just not going to even input them i think for this coming year although i had before because it's see there's people talking about getting their kids to work i'm a mean mom the world helps me clean rats <laughs> she knows how to she knows the order like i do uh my brain just went blank the horse stall white the pine pellets no it's like the white powder oh pdz pdz thank you and then i do the pine pellets and then i do pine flake and then i do sunflower seeds and feed and anything else like toilet paper rolls or you know applewood sticks or whatever else i'm doing and she knows the whole order so i will like put it down and i'll do the pdz zd and she knows like the amount to scoop into it and everything and i'm like get it girl (laughs) hurry (laughs) And she's four people, so uh, they Aww. definitely can help. Um, but then, it, you know, my 10-year-old's like, whatever, mom, I made you so much money at the last reptile <laughs> show. Um, I don't think I need to do any chores in the snake room. And I'm like, girl, I have nothing to say to that. <laughs> good, good slap back. <laughs> uh, I think we did it. We're ending on a happy note. Tell everybody to see you at the show and... Justin and Andy. Andy, why can't I remember? Is I think of him as Andrew, but then you said it Andy, is Andrew, and then I and say it Andy deleted it my brain. Off. So he goes by Andrew, but his PayPal is Andy's Attic. I, I believe he has another business. I don't know what it's about. I should probably figure it out since he's a sponsor. But it comes into my PayPal as Andy, and so it makes me laugh. So I call him Andy, and he's never like told me I couldn't. So <laughs> you've revealed too much. <laughs> Um, so I just call him Andy because I think it's cute because he's so not an Andy. He's so an Andrew, like very no, professional, yeah, very serious, very like, very courteous. And I'm like, hey, Andy. And he just like, okay. Jen. Dang it, you ho. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Thanks, right, everybody, guys. for coming. We'll see you next week with the show.
we'll talk about how the show went yeah mostly and... the show update if we can get somebody from there to join to explain how they did yep we'll i don't know who somebody... obviously whoever's available yeah and then whatever probably news or something yeah. anyway we'll see you next week thanks for tuning in i love you i love you Okay, now it's just weird. (laughs) I made it worse.